Father, I just pray that there will be lights come on this morning as we come around your word. Mm. Holy Spirit, just illuminate to us and to every heart and mind here that we'll be so wrapped up in what you have got for us that it will have action. They will have real effects in our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, Mark chapter 6, the first six verses. And he went out from thence and came into his home, own country, and his disciples followed him. Mm. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence has this man these things? And what wisdom is this? which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his name. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and of Judah and of Simon and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. And Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honour, but in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. And he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. And he marvelled because of their unbelief, and he went around about villages teaching. And seven I'll read. And he called unto him the twelve, and began to send them forth two by two and two, and gave them power over unclean spirits. So here is, uh, here is the picture. He returns back to his hometown. Nazareth. He, he returns back to his hometown. And this tells me that Jesus was unafraid of people, what people would do to him, even the religious people. Remember when he first went to the hometown and he stands up, and you can read it in Luke 4 18, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me to heal the broken heart. And he said, this day is this scripture fulfilled. It's fulfilled in your ears. Mm. And what do they do? They want to rise up mm. and throw him off a cliff. Yes. Now, if that happened to you, would you be keen to go back to that town straight away? Mm. Remembering that if Jesus said, you know, it's best if you're not received in one town, just wipe the dust off your feet and move on mm. to another town. And yet we find that Jesus here is unafraid of those same people who had rejected him the first time. Mm. Now that's something that gives me courage and strength. Because sometimes when we get opposition, when we get people that don't, don't want to listen to us even, or start ridiculing, we're quick to really go out mm. and say, hey, look, you know, I've done my job here, let's go. There comes a time where we must wipe our feet from the dust clinging to our shoes as we're coming because the gospel is good news. And if they reject it, there is that place where I'm going to move into this a little bit clearer when we come to the place where he could do no, no mighty work in this town. But First off, I'd say, look, we must follow Jesus. We must do what he did. Mm -hmm. Not to be afraid of people. He did not shake the dust off his feet this time. The next thing that we learn from this passage is that unbelief generated by familiarity. They had prejudices against Jesus. Mm -hmm. You think you're a teacher? We know who you are. Mm. You're only a carpenter's son. Mm. Really, you make no difference. Why should we listen to you? You don't hold high status. Mm. We've known you 30 years you've been with us. And even the last time you came here, why should we listen to you? Because you upset the people by telling us that you have the word of God and that, that whole sort of process 
that God has spoken through you enough to say that this day these scriptures have been fulfilled in you. We can go do the same thing. How many of you find it extremely difficult to speak to your relatives? Mm. Oh, we know you. Mm. You think you're someone because you've become religious? You think that we should listen to you because you're more holy than us because I've had this battle for years. I get more success out there with people that I don't know. Mm. Mm. I have people come up to me after a few difficult times with them and they come, I can see, I can see. God does the work. Mm. But there are people out there that are your relatives mm. that you come out back and say, oh, you know, it's a simple it's a simple path that I want you to walk through. It's a simple path that says that Jesus is the way. There is no way that you can argue your way into the heavens. There's no way that you're going to be good enough to get to heaven without Jesus. Mm -hmm. Justice and grace meet together in the cross. Justice and mercy meet together in the cross. Mm -hmm. Our love for Him grows as we experience the forgiveness that comes from Him. And, and we ha I have relatives that will cling on to the traditions of a dead church. Mm. Will hang on to that and say, well, you've got your religion, I've got mine. Surely that's it. But I, I can break through often with people that... Stephanie, for example, just with the with, with what's been there, she's open. She loves us, and yet if I said the same things over two years to my brothers and sisters, mm. they would mm. not there Peter. and that's think, Peter. "Well, that's just Peter." Peter. Yeah. Yeah. That's, awesome. that's yeah. just Peter. Yeah. He's my brother. And, uh, you know, I've got an opportunity this Wednesday with the funeral mm. to make it very clear again. But a lot of those will be people that aren't there, aren't my brothers and sisters. Mm. And yet I look at our life and I think, oh, my dad was a Lutheran, my mum was a yeah, Methodist, yes. and I was the first Catholic in the family, and yet they all became Catholic after that. And now I'm the only Catholic well, that. that hasn't been Catholic. Because God opened my eyes and, and set me free to, the, to, the, to who Jesus is. Mm. And, and that's the wonderful, wonderful thing that I value. And I, I desire to see them come through. Mm. And uh, we've had many, many a time with my family. But you see what I'm getting at? The prejudice. Now, if that happened to Jesus, what hope have I got with mm. my family? Mm. except by the grace of God mm. except when you when you share the good news that somehow there is a, a place where the mercy of God can come through where the love of God can come through and they say oh you're judging me I'm not I'm telling you the truth mm. the truth sets people free mm. and uh, and so Jesus had the same thing but you notice and this is what I found from the Word of God. The first time he went there, they wanted to throw him over a cliff. The second time he went there, they rejected him. He could do no mighty works in that place, except heal a few people. And, and in that time that he was there, he never went back to that town ever again. It's not recorded that he went back to that town again. It's not stated that he wiped the dust off his feet, having been rejected by them. But you see, there is a time in God when we need to shut up and not give any more. When Jesus, often the hardest people are your family. But you, you, you look at the, the centurion. And the Syrophoenician woman, mm. who said, look, if you won't heal my daughter, well, what about, because Jesus referred to her as being like, like a dog. Mm. 
Now that's a big insult that you put off anyone. Uh, he says, even the dogs get the crumbs from the table. Mm -hmm. and, and Jesus said, I haven't had... I, I, he marveled mm -hmm. at the belief of the centurion and the Syrophoenician woman. Mm -hmm. And yet his own family, mm -hmm. his own town, he says he was amazed at their unbelief. Mm -hmm. And with that unbelief, mm -hmm. he would just simply... It must have torn him apart in one sense. Which is something else that we learn from this. Jesus did not deviate from what he came to do because of some opposition by his family. Mm. And we must learn that no matter whether it be your family or whether it be anyone else, we don't deviate from what Jesus has called us to do. You know, I am not my own. I'm saying of myself. And we need to make this true for each one of us. I am not my own. I've been bought with a price. I'm a bought man. Bought with the precious blood of Jesus. That means I don't own what happens to me under God anymore. I don't come to that place of saying, No God, I can't do that because it's too hard. Or oh, my family doesn't like me doing stuff like that. I'm going to be upsetting the traditions of our family over the years. No, I belong to God belong to Jesus and as that I'm a proud child of God that's something we can have true pride in because we are his kids and uh, uh, you know we've we stressed the fact that we are ambassadors for Christ an ambassador we're talking about an ambassador that was supposed to come from America to Australia but is now going to Korea well that ambassador has to make America look good Mm. And we, our, our main job each day, as David Gibbs has taught us, our main job each day is to make Jesus look good because we're his ambassador. Mm. Mm. And, and so if anyone tries to come back on us and cause us to be disgruntled, mm. downhearted, demolished by their words, then... We've failed Christ. We've made Jesus mm -hmm. not look good. Mm -hmm. But the enemy has used that to, to drive into us a thing that, well, I'm going to stop you because I know that you value the, the, the fear of man more than anything else. So, I think we learn from that that when Jesus came to that place where he could do no great miracle in that place. When you think about it, and this is where we were talking this morning, when we were talking about your daughter, and not forcing her mm -hmm. to come, because that would be no good. Well, this is the omnipotent God, mm -hmm. the God of the universe, and yet he couldn't do one great miracle in that place. Was that because he lacked the power? No. If you think of Lazarus and the rich man, Lazarus was in the bosom of Abraham, the rich man was in hell. The rich man said to God, said to, said to Abraham, look, send someone back to tell my relatives that they will not need to come to this place. What did Abraham say? They won't even mm. believe, even if someone rose from the dead. This is why, that would be a great miracle. That would be, if, if, if Abraham said, look, yep, yeah, fine, we'll do it, go back. Mm. But he knew, and this was the same thing in Nazareth. <coughs> God, in his mercy and wisdom, could have forced all those people. Then where would free will be? Yeah. Mm. Where would... God's grace and justice be? Where would they freely come to love Him and let go their prejudices where they would not see Jesus as just someone that would be uh, 
the person that they knew so well that they would not value as the Son of God. Mm -hmm. He had done mighty miracles before then, surely that would be enough, but that wasn't enough for them. So it wouldn't be enough if he did a mighty miracle there. No more than it would be if Abraham sent back a person to tell the relatives of the rich man. So it's not that God lacks power. God knows when mm. not to do things. And that takes more power sometimes to shut up. Mm. I'm talking about that mm. in, our own, in our own lives sometimes. Mm. And, uh, and that's a wonderful part that God does. The part that sees me in Mark 7, though, to finish up, or Mark 6 and 7, we learn from this that God, even though he'd been disappointed with the response of his own people in Nazareth, he didn't stop. He, he, in Mark 6 it says, And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went around about the villagers teaching. Yeah, that, that's amazing. It, it's, it's like Jesus didn't sit down and have a pity party. No. <laughs> he didn't say, oh, it's awful. Well, what am I here for? Oh, I wish there was something I could do for these people. They'd done it themselves. They closed off that avenue of grace that was offered to them. But he didn't stop. He didn't melt down in a in a, 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 a pool of pity and start saying, God, what am I here for? He knew what he was there for. Mm -hmm. He went to the villages round about. And he called unto him the twelve and began to send them forth by two and two and gave them power over unclean spirits. So he then sent off his disciples. And what happened then? They came back rejoicing. Even the unclean spirits have power over them. He says, don't rejoice in that. Just rejoice that your name is written in heaven. And I, I think those, just those seven verses give me fresh strength to deal with the opposition I have with family, to deal with the opposition you may have with family. But we still go on. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Mm. There'll be some along the way that will have mm. good news mm. brought to them. Now, I know that we all have a task. We all have a God-given purpose. and task. We've got eternity in our hearts. Jeremiah tells us we've got eternity in our hearts. And that will not be squashed by any opposition. And the burden I have this week is the the, the thing where Australia has churches mm. that have been given the opportunity to rise up as one voice, but they've decided not to do a thing. There's this thing happening in Britain right now that the little lad has died. Mm. And the thing that's said right now is the churches in England have been disgraceful in their lack of standing up for this little child who has had the state, in a sense, has killed them. Now we are in a similar situation with what's happening. If we stay silent with what's happening to the Falun Gong, if we stay silent and think, well, it doesn't affect us, we've got other things to be worried about, be concerned about, look, it'll, it'll take its turn. I've been amazed this last week at how slowed down and unresponsive so many people are that know of these things and yet don't want to get involved. Mm. They don't want to. They say, oh, uh, one, one uh, wrote and he said, oh, look, what can I do? I wrote back what you can do. And, uh, and there are many, many things that can, can be done in these days. We need to raise our voice. There are many things demanding attention. And not everyone can hear of everything that goes on. I mean, if you ask people, did you hear about the Real Bodies exhibition? This guy, um, what's his name? Zeller. Tom Zeller. He admits that they have no documentation for these 
bodies. And yet he says, the petition has been started and the whole protest has been started, the whole storm in the teacup, as he puts it, with the, with the, the politicians has started because it's all fake news. Mm. Yeah. It's all lies. Yeah. So I've written back to, it's a very good one, uh, the ABC one, that has, uh, has put an article out. And uh, I said, well, if it is fake news, let him bring the documentation mm. to disprove what is mm. being said. Mm. But they just lie. Mm. Just stand out there. And we live in a world that wants to muddy the truth. Mm. But we're going to walk on the water, the living water, mm. the truth mm. that God has given us. And don't be discouraged. The truth is what will win in the long run. And don't get bogged down either. We just need to rise up. Be in prayer. Go into the throne room. We can do it. Mm. I've often wondered, you know, in prayer. Uh, I, I know my own prayer life in an earlier time. I think, God, you're listening to me. I know for sure. And I'm listening to you. But at the same time, have I got right into the throne room? <laughs> And, and you know, I think of Nehemiah sometimes, that mm -hmm. he was the cupbearer, and he, he was a bit sad one day, and the king says, yeah, what's up? And he says, well, I've got a job. I, I, I'm concerned because Jerusalem is in ruins. Our walls of our towns are being demolished. It, mm -hmm. uh, we have a burden on our heart. When we go into the throne room, we can bring that burden straight to the Holy of Holies. And the good things happen because we are not to come into the presence of the King miserable. Mm. We are to enter his gates with thanksgiving in our heart mm. and enter his courts with praise. Mm. We can do that. This is a Holy Ghost revival movement if we do that. This is not waiting for someone to tell you how to pray. This is because of prayer we can move in and, and, and demolish mountains of opposition. Because the Father can hear our prayer. Mm. It's, it says that you know, the, the fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Avails much. Mm. And, and, and that's exciting. This is where the battle is won. It's not just having a prayer meeting. You know, mm. I see some things happening in Adelaide at the moment where they're wanting to... Uh, there's a group called Adelaide Arise that I have real concerns about where there are those who that sort of want to go around putting oil on things and doing all spooky stuff around the place. But if they only knew that they could enter into the throne room, mm. throne room of God, mm. let your burdens be known. Cast all your care upon him. But it's got to be real things. And I think when you go into the presence of the king, you've got to have something to say. Mm. Yes. You don't want to know about things that aren't really of importance to the kingdom of God. He loves us to have faith. When, when unbelief takes hold, the door's locked. Mm. When a confidence in a holy God inspires us to ask big of our God, mm. then we have, we have sure ground that he will answer. And he will answer the way he wants answered. And he will trip it. But there are times in the last few few months that I've just only called out the name of Jesus. Take no word. He that calls upon the name of the Lord. Jesus. He hears the heartbeat of his people. So I trust that encouragement. It's just Mark chapter 6, verse 7 verses. It will freshly inspire you, I believe, as you feed on it. And give praise to him. Hallelujah.